Hey everybody, welcome back to the great state of Montana. This is the Caribbean Cowboy. I was going to do that camouflage painting video for you today. Sorry we've been away for a while, but between vacations and spring cleaning, we've been kind of busy. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the rifle. And then I'm going to go over a few things with you to prep the rifle before you paint it. First thing you want to do is make sure anything you don't want to get paint on, the mask off, tape off, the action, scope covers, trigger, rubber butt pad. Last but not least, don't forget to plug the barrel. You don't want paint getting down on the barrel. The other thing you want to do is you want to make sure you wipe the gun down with alcohol and get all the oil and grease off of it. That way the paint sticks to it. And then what I do is I cut me some stencils out of a manila folder to use as a template. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint this gun OD green and then we're going to tiger stripe it. And I'll show you how I do that using black and then a few other colors to go along with it. Hope you enjoy this. So I'm going to do this in stages so stay tuned. Okay, as you can tell, I got most of the gun painted OD green, and what I do is I try to let it dry in between coats. Now, let me tell you guys something. I'm married. I got a wife. And I'm going to tell you something. You do this in the house, and you better be willing to pay the double because that uh, camouflage Krylon paint sticks really well to everything it gets onto. And the problem is, as you get that in the house, the little lady's not going to be really happy. And the uh, fumes that it emits is uh, not really pleasant. Most women don't care for it. So what I'm going to do is I apply a light coat. I let one end of it dry so I can handle it. And then I'm going to apply the coat to the other end. And then when I get done, we'll go to the tiger striping process. Uh, so just stay tuned. Okay, now we're going to start on the tiger striping process. And uh, I'll try to go slow and explain to you what I'm doing. Depending on how you want your tiger stripe done, all you have to do is just kind of lay it out. I have a series of templates here that I use and uh, it makes your life a lot easier than trying to use tape and mask it off and all that kind of stuff but uh, you can do it just about any way you want it but this is the way I do it works best for me anyway word to the wise though make sure your paint is dry before you do this that way you get no smears that way you get no runs Okay. And what you want to do is just give it a real light coating. Like so. Then what you want to do is move your template and repeat. Making sure that you keep your lines going in the same direction so the gun looks uniform.
I'm going to try to zoom in on this so you guys can see what I'm talking about. I'm sorry if the light is uh, not so good. But the black, you can see it. It's like so. And it does show up a lot better in the light. I'm sorry, but I'm trying to do this in a place where there's no breeze blowing. But you can see the black on the gun. Like so. Shows up a little better there. But anyway, as I progress, I'll try to get some better pictures for you. But just make sure, as I said, you let this dry in between coats. Because if not, you're going to end up with a big, big mess. Okay, I've got both sides of the rifle coated. Um, the thing you're going to want to remember is you don't want to get too heavy. You want to do it lightly. And you can see the black. But what's really going to make that black pop is when I put the, uh, they're kind of, they're not white. An original tiger stripe to separate the black from the green, they used kind of like an ivory off-white uh, stripe along the black and the green, which really, really makes that pop. Uh, some tiger stripe I've seen has a little brown in it. The original Vietnam tiger stripe that I have from the 1960s just basically has three colors, green, black, and then that ivory off-white that I was talking about. Some of it did, some of it didn't. The thing that people have to realize is during the Vietnam War, the original Tiger Stripe was actually made overseas and it was not military issue. Um, so there was various different patterns, various different colors, um, but it was not originally uh, government issue. Uh, they purchased it with their own money. I always kind of liked Tiger Stripe. I really did. But uh, we'll continue on. Now by adding that ivory color just a dab, you can see how it makes that black pop out of there. You don't want to get too carried away with it. All it does is add a little bit of separation between the black and the green. Once I get this done and I get it in a little better light, you'll see what I'm saying. But you can see how it just adds a little bit of contrast. It's just a little bit to separate the shadows. That's all it's really designed for. Now as you can see, by adding that little bit, you see the contrast that it brought out between the black and the green. You don't want to get too carried away with it. You really don't, because what it'll do, if you do, is it'll just end up being one big solid gob. That's not what you're after. All you're after is just a little distinction between the two colors. And that's all that that really does. Is that a little bit of contrast. So, the other thing you might want to do, what I do, is if you don't put a sealer on top of this, some of the gun oils, gun cleaners will take the paint off. So what I end up doing is I end up putting a clear coat of matte over top of it. Matte clear coat. Don't use a gloss because if you use a gloss it'll be really shiny and that kind of defeats your purpose. But what you're after is you're after just a flat finish and I'll go ahead and do that, and then once I put that matte clear coat, it really makes it pop. So we'll let this dry. Now, you don't have to use a brush like I did to put that on. I do, just so I don't end up having a bunch of colors all over the place. But this is the way I do it. And uh, let me get the clear coat put on here as soon as it dries, and we'll close this video up. And then uh, you guys can see what I'm talking about. 
Okay guys, here's the finished product. You see once you put that clear coat on there, it really makes it pop. I could have got a little more radical with it. I could have put a little more black and all on there if I wanted to. But I didn't. Because black in Mother Nature is kind of an unreal color. So all you're after is something to break up the outline. That's all camouflage is for, is just to break up an outline. But uh, as you can tell, I think it turned out really nice. I think my dad will really like this. Let me turn it over so you can see the other side. And there you go. I think it turned out really, really, really nice. You can see the distinction in the colors. You can see how it turned out. All the lines are uniform. And it looks really nice. So anyway, I just thought I would bring this to you. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, remember, it's only paint. And if you want to remove this, acetone takes it off. Do not use paint stripper. Acetone works really, really well. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. This is the Carbine Cowboy coming to you from the great state of Montana. Uh, saying we'll see you next time.